So last time we were talking about different ways we can improve the ranking cycle. So let's summarize. We, if we increase our temperature, that's a good thing. However, that's limited by metallurgical concerns. Like if I get too hot, it's going to melt. I can also decrease the lowest temperatures. I can decrease the pressure of the condenser, but then I have excessive moisture. So what can I do to try my best to increase my average higher temperature without ruining the um, quality of my vapor? Well, it's two ideas. One, what we saw last time was we could superheat the steam to very high temperatures, but that's still going to cause issues metallurgically. The second one, though, is what if we expand the steam in two stages, and if we reheat it in between? Well, as you can guess, based on the title of this slide, that's what we're going to try. So this is what's called a reheat ranking cycle. Now, there's a lot going on in this picture, so I'm going to take a little bit of time trying to go through this to make sure you can see everything. Now, some aspects are the same. So I still have a saturated liquid that's being pumped. So that's all exactly the same. I still have our boiler heating everything up. And I still have a turbine taking it all the way back down to a saturated mixture of high quality. What's different is this area in between. So because I can't increase my temperature up infinitely like I want to, that doesn't work. I go ahead and I remove some power, move some energy from the flow with this first high pressure turbine. Now, once I've done that, you are expanding. When you go out of the turbine, your um, pressure is dropping. Like I'm on a lower, so I can make it work right. I'm on a lower line right here, which means my pressure is lower. And if I were to continue to go all the way down to remove as much energy as I can at that stage, well, you can see that my quality would be abysmal. I don't want that. So what we do is we say, okay, this high pressure turbine has done it what it can. Now we're going to pump this still superheated vapor back into the boiler and we're going to take this hotter but lower pressure vapor all the way back to our low pressure turbine, which is what you see right here. So I've heated it back up to my max temperature I can. I put it into the low pressure turbine and I take the rest of the energy. So I have a gain in energy. I also have a gain in complexity, but I do gain energy by doing this. I make my system more efficient. Okay, now let's walk around the actual picture itself. So usually for diagrams when I'm numbering them, I start with what comes out of the condenser, the liquid, the saturated liquid. That goes into a pump, and that pump goes straight to the high pressure turbine. Once it's done what it can, it goes back through the boiler and then into the low pressure turbine before going all the way to the condenser. So if you look at this right here, this is not a pipe. This is just saying this is one axle with the, both turbines producing power. Now, because I have multiple stages where I'm adding heat, I add heat between 4 and 5. I also add heat between 2 and 3. Um, our heat equation, our heat input equation, is a little bit more complex. We have to take into account both of those. Same thing when it comes to our work output. We have two turbines, and so we have two terms for getting our work output right here. So make sure you're including both of those. Okay, now a single reheat cycle increases efficiency by about four to five percent. And so the thought here is, aha, okay, well, five percent times 20 equals a hundred percent. As a note, that's not how efficiencies work, um, but we're pretending, okay? We're pretending. It's, in, it's improving it by 5%. Um, it drops off. It does drop off, okay? So if I do a second stage, it will be more efficient, but we're not going to do more than two stages. The reason for that is because um, the second reheat cycle is only about half as efficient as the first, and you can guess the third will be half again. Also, you're adding a lot of complexity. Like, the picture was already getting kind of crazy. So even though I could have, you know, theoretically do something like this where I have a very, very high average temperature because I've, you know, had so many reheat cycles, um, I'd be adding a whole lot of cost and honestly not that much efficiency gain to do that. So if 
about two reheat cycles is about as much as you're going to see. Now, one thing we didn't really talk about too much is, you know, how much energy do I take to get the most bang for my buck? If I draw the diagram again, so it looks something like this. I have my um, phase change line. I go from here up, go up a little bit, hits this line, and I go up. I cool it down a little bit by stealing some energy. I reheat it, and I go back down. So there it is. Now my question is, why did we stop right there? Why not right here? Like, is there a good point? Is this better than that one? Is this better than that one? I can choose any of these points until I cross that phase change line. So why do I choose that? Well, the answer is that there's actually an optimum reheat pressure for whatever your system is. Now, this value right here, just so you know, this is just taken from an example in the textbook. So this is not for everything. Like, don't be like, aha, 300 PSI absolute. That's the perfect one. It, it's not. Um, you know, you have to do it for each individual example. But just know that that is a consideration that um, people are having to make when they're making these reheat ranking cycles, determining what pressure it drops down to after that first turbine. Yep. So now we're going on to an example. So we'll stop here, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.